Okay, it's 4.15. Let's go ahead and get started. Oh, that one. Okay, okay, okay. Um, first item on the agenda, anyone who is opposed to getting out early, listen to the way that was worded. <laughs> opposed to getting out early, raise your hand. Tonight. Okay. So we'll we will get out early. I'm, my goal is by five. Um, oh wow. The agenda. Questions on the agenda? Sure. Yeah. Good idea. Um, I um, all those in favor? I, well, I do want to. We're going to table individual and play group calendars for a month. I found something that needs to be fixed. Uh, we're really two or three months ahead of schedule. I'm, I think last year those were uh, approved by the board in May, so we're, we're plenty early yet. So individual employee group calendars, let's table that. Um, with that deletion, if you're in favor of approving the agenda, please raise your hand. Opposed, same sign. Okay. <clears throat> um, the minutes from January 17th, I know Betsy had a question. Betsy, you want to... Go ahead and well, I just we had talked about the SPED teachers reimbursements, how they only get they would get ten dollars an hour if they had to give a test, and if we pull people in to give the test, it's one hundred twenty five dollars. And the committee, some I don't know who the committee is, but if somebody was going to look into that. Mm -hmm. I would just like the minutes to reflect. <coughs> we should talked about that because it somehow was not in the minutes. Okay. So. Yeah. While uh, while we're on that topic, Stephanie has agreed to take minutes for us tonight. Bridget's baby is sick, so she oh. went, went home. <coughs> Stephanie, I think on that. Sheet of the minutes. The very last bullet on the uh, page was continued salary schedule discussion. I think it could best be put into there and just uh, indicate that um, we were going to look into the pay rate for testing on the additional pay rate schedule. Would that cover? Okay, that's mm -hmm. it. Does that make sense, Stephanie? Look into the pay rate for testing. For testing as found on the additional pay rate. For, for sped, special ed testing. Special ed testing. Testing as found on the additional pay rates document schedule. Anything else on the minutes that anybody wanted to comment about? Okay, with that addition, if you are in favor of approving the minutes, please raise your hand. Opposed, same sign. Thank you. Uh, the employee group calendars we just tabled. Um, the insurance update. We had a webinar with um, J.W. Terrell. Was that just yesterday, Dr. Edgar? Mm -hmm. Time flies. It seems like a month ago already. Um, and, and basically the message was things are going well. They're having a lot of good response back from vendors in terms of interest in our, in our uh, having our business, up, which is, you know, we're a big district. People are going to want to insure us. Um, I believe they're coming to the board meeting to make a, to give an update on March 4th, I believe it is. Should have this timeline in front of me. Either March 4th or 5th. March 5th. There are going to be finalist presentations made, and then the process will just continue from there. Uh, so they're they're pleased with the way things are coming in, which sounded like great news. That there's um, obviously the more interest there is in being our vendor, the more competition, and then they're able to to drive the prices lower. So. Um, sounded like all good news as far as what's coming with the insurance products. Any questions on on that topic? And just to refresh my memory on that, they're looking at because I know at one point we looked at what they were we the RFP or whatever was we you showed us, but um, they're looking for what we currently have and for other options. Is that what they're bidding out? I can't remember exactly what you said they they were putting out to bid. Um, well, the bid process involves, you know, they get, uh, people want to see our claim history, right. which they give us, and then they're, they're looking at similar plans to what we have now, and then also plans that move us away from the, the HMO okay. and the PPO more toward the HSA, trying to incentivize that. Um, what else, Dr. Edgar, should we 
I think that's about it. And then, of course, your uh, ancillary products. Ancillary your, services. You know, your uh, dental and vision and those types of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's all, all being good at. Did that answer your question, Eric? Yes. Okay. Any other questions about the insurance? All right. Uh, the forward planning discussion, I just gave you the, the document that the board um, passed. It. That was in January. You got already, I believe, it just that single page document. I just wanted you to have that for your. You mean uh -huh. the one that you sent us in January for the January meeting? Oh, did I not resend that? No. No. Sorry. Okay. It's the same one that I sent you in January. Okay. It's, um, I think it was titled, I can't remember what it was titled. It was just a single page. Well, what was it about? It had the board's plan for um, $500 increase to the teacher base. Okay, it was called 1 p.m. draft. 1 p.m. draft. Yeah, that's what it's called. Just wanted to make sure that you guys were still, still had that. And I've not heard any evidence to the contrary that if the levy is successful that they will go away from that. I think that is the plan. Is that right, Mrs. Hodges? And Ms. Ms. Tammy? This is the plan. We okay. won't, we may, we shouldn't deter from it for five years. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the salary table, or the salary schedule discussions. Um, many of you know kind of the history of that. Um, since I got here, we've been looking at lots of things, and, and Wes and I worked a lot on this the last two years, and this being the third. We've been trying to, um, the board push ever since I got here, and probably before, I don't know, was we want equity, we want to treat everybody fairly, we don't want outlying groups where somebody's getting huge raises and somebody's small and somebody, you know, they want things to be as, as equal as they can be, you know, Nothing is ever going to be 100% equal, but they want to, that was the goal of it. Um, so we've been looking at salary schedules and trying to get everybody, every employee group, into at least the 50th percentile of comparable districts. Uh, we've made lots of changes to lots of schedules. Last year, the administrative and the professional schedules got a, a fairly significant overhaul. And what happened on those salary schedules was the size of the steps, the increments from year to year, was compressed significantly. Some groups that uh, I feel like it's still uh, in, a, in the process of equity would make sense to do with, we've talked about before, it's the process consultant, the OTPT, uh, BCBA, and the SLP schedules in particular. Um, Hopefully, I thought I sent these to you. Did I send you a packet of salary schedules? Last not, time. Not last last time. time. Last time. You haven't sent okay. us anything for this meeting. Only the, the agenda and the minutes. Okay. Must have been on a snow day I sent it. <laughs> I'll be back in two minutes. Take a break. My, my apologies. I obviously dropped the ball and getting this stuff to you. Take one of these as they come around. Um, what we're going to do is I'm just going to explain what's here, and we'll um, have our major discussion about this next time as well, or continue the discussion. I'll wait till they get around, then I'll tell you what you're looking at. Okay, um, there are three sets, or four, actually four different occupational categories included in, in this document. Uh, the first three pages, and I didn't staple mine so I could, could show these to you, from, from left to right in my hands here, and it would be your pages one, two, and three if you're looking at that from left to right. Page one is the current process consultant salary schedule, just like it is on the website. Okay? 
Um, if you look between steps one and two, uh, you'll see there's on the master's column, there's a difference of $1,050. So the initial step on that is $1,050. If you look in between steps uh, five and six, you see that the um, step increases. It jumps to $1,150. All right. Uh, and it's that way through columns two through five, the master's plus 16, 32, the doctorate, etc. As I looked at those differentials between the size of the step and the entry level salary in that column, it's disparate. It's much larger percentage than like on the teacher scale, for instance, between masters with one year experience and masters with two is only 500 and some dollars. This is either 1,050 or jumps up to 1,195. So the size of the steps for jobs with the same or comparable ex um, education is widely different. Okay, and you'll find the same things on the SLP and the OTP BCBA. That's why I feel like we need to look at these. Is that those steps need to be compressed and. Uh, Jerry can tell you this is what we did with the professional last year was a very similar situation where the size of the steps compared to the entry level salary was a much higher percentage. So page two is a proposed, it's still indexed, it's indexed to 36,200, which is the current teacher base. The size of the steps rather than being over 1,000 and almost 1,200 were changed to 850, 875, 900, 900, 950. And that's, that's in between, just above where it says step one. Okay, so there's the, there's the step level. The, so the at amount. the doctorate level, every step has $950 between them. Correct. Okay. And 900 in the 2 column preceding and 850, 875. Again, that's, that's quite a bit smaller than what they were. They were over 1,050 and, and 1,195 on some of them. So it compresses the schedule. So if you look at master's column, step 31 on the first schedule, or on page two, you'll see it goes to $78,076. Everybody see that number? Look on page one, step 31, it was 87,836. So it compressed it basically $9,000. Again, that's very similar to what we did with the professional scale last year and the administrative. Now, I can see some of you panicking, thinking, well, somebody's going to lose a lot of money. If we do this the same as we did the professional and the administrative, uh, we wouldn't just be saying, okay, well, you were on step 20 here, which is 74,000. We're going to put you on step 20 here, which is 68. We would find the closest amount, well you find the steps that it falls between, take the higher of the two and then give them a step like everybody else would get. So nobody will go backwards in their total salary and then what, what happens is would they get less of an increase every year? Yes, very definitely and that's the point of the compression of the schedules to get those steps to a, uh, to a more equitable level. Page three is the exact same as page two, except it's indexed to 36.7, which hopefully, if the levy passes, this would be the one that we would then use. And since it's indexed, it changes the steps from 850, 875, et cetera, to 862, 888, 912, 912, 963. And that's the beauty of indexing is that all I had to do to create this spreadsheet was change that top number and everything else populates. Now to figure out all of the formulas to get it to do that was a little more time consuming, but now it's done. Okay. So that's the way all of them are. It's yes. Just the next set of the yeah the next set of three pages is the OTPT BCBA. Exact same format. First page is the current salary schedule. The next one is is my proposed compression of the steps and index to 36.2. The third one is the same compression index to 36.7.
and then the next three pages are the SOP, the exact same format. Okay, so if you understand the first three pages, you understand four through six and seven through nine. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, now, in behind that, the last two pages, ever since I got here and probably before, um, people had been um, talking about, you know, we really could use some school psychologists. My personal thought for what it's worth is, yeah, I think that's a, that's a very definite need. You know, we've talked about um, so many of our kids have so many, uh, so much, there's so much trauma, so many um, mental and physical issues that anything in that line, counseling, social working, school psychs, the more the better. Um, we finally, we had been advertising for a long, long time, finally found a qualified candidate. And then we realized that we did not have a salary schedule for um, school psychologists. Yeah. And what you see, uh, the first page says new proposed. It's indexed to 36.2. The one behind that is 36.7. Um, this would be a 211-day contract. So the numbers that you see would be based on a 211 uh, or 10 month. The way I got these um, in discussions with um, Dr. Thomason, we decided that the primary duties of this person would most closely align with those of the process consultants. So what I did was took the process consultants, the two pages that you have from them that say 36.2 and 36.7, if you take any number on this one and divide it by 211 and multiply it by 196, you'll get the exact step on the process consultant. So the, if you figured them, each of those on a daily rate, the uh, process consultant and the school psych would be identical. So that's where these, these numbers came from. Um, since we do have a candidate that has been offered a job and saying, yeah, I'd love to work with you, but I'm not resigning until I know that I'm approved, which is the prudent thing to do, um, we're going to take this to the board on Monday. So this basically is an informational item for us. Um, if we can find another qualified candidate, our goal is to have two school sites for next year. That was what was put in the forward planning document. Uh, if we don't find the right person, obviously we won't fill the second spot. So questions on this? So these are going, theoretically, these are going forward as long as the board approves it regardless of whether the levy passes or not? Um, the, the only one that will go to the board is the one that's indexed to 36.2. Right, but I'm saying that the positions themselves yes, that's our intent. are going to happen regardless of whether Because I know that yes. that was one of the things that was on the proposed thing for the levy. I, would, yeah. I didn't understand um, that it if was... It, if, it, uh, if the levy does not pass, my understanding is that they would make room in the title budgets okay. for these. Okay. It wouldn't come from the general. Is that... Correct, Dr. Yeah, that's Edgar. correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So hopefully we have new money from the levy. If not, the um, expenses associated with the school psych would come from title. So what gets? It doesn't worst make case, so what gets cut? Because something gets cut to make those positions, and I agree that they're important. Mm -hmm. But what gets cut to make room for that? That would be on a building by building basis. It would, uh, the principals have a pretty fair latitude in determining how to spend their, the title funds are allocated by building and the principals have quite a bit of latitude in how they want to spend their, their uh, funds. So I don't Some of those they're... funds, if I remember correctly, are for staff. So does that mean that they could, they could terminate somebody in order to make the money for that? Like what's theoretically what's They could, they could change the... the allocation, yes. So we and, could get rid think, of people to all get the, people. I think all of the money capacity. is allocated to staff, is it not, Dr. Edgar? Yes, and, and, I, I, and I think to answer your question, it would um, we would probably take care of that through attrition. So nobody's going to get lose their job or or lose a position right. in itself. There, those non I, and I don't understand how the non categorical dollar dollars are spent uh, totally. Harley would be the one that asked that question. But you just shift those dollars around. Uh, 
So uh, thank you. That, I mean, that helps me, but that still there's a service that is being provided to students through those dollars that is then taken away so we can provide a, another service. So I mean, it's still I mean, it's still a disadvantage to to the kids. Either way we go, really, well, if there's no I levy. Too when that's one of the things that was on the proposed budget for if the levy passed. I think we need to make sure that we're being very clear about that we're already going to put them in place. Because I don't, I mean, if we're already going to theoretically hire one, and that's what's on that proposed budget for, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah, there are two on the, on the proposal. But we're, we're saying gonna we're going to go ahead one, and, but if we have another qualified candidate. We allocate funds through title, but if we actually pass the levy, no, when we actually pass the levy, uh, and have the money then in operations, then we won't have to take the money and reallocate in title because then we'll be able to pay for those two psychologists because they're part of our right. I'm just five million. Right, I understand that completely. I'm just saying I think we need to make sure because clearly at our meeting at the MSTA meeting, you know, that was given to us. I just don't want the community or our own people to think, well, you put that on there as if that's going to be there, but then we're already doing it. I want them to understand that money's going to be taken away from other things in order, to, do in order to, to have them because we believe that they're so important. But if the budget, if the levy passes, do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Further clarify, if I can, Eric, uh, just mm -hmm. as an example, uh, some of our buildings use um, title funds to hire FIC, the Family Involvement Coordinators. Okay. Some have said, well, instead of a FIC, I'd rather have a reading specialist. Or instead of a reading specialist, I'd rather have two title paras. So, as Dr. Edgar was mentioning with the, with the attrition, I don't foresee anybody us saying to anybody, sorry, you don't have a job next year, we're going to spend the money this way instead. But, yeah. Can I ask one question? Absolutely. So you hire one person, so you're not taking, it would be split between all the schools, a portion oh, of the oh, funds yes. come out. Yes, okay. the, the school sites will work in multiple schools. Okay. They won't be housed at any one, okay. at any one individual school. Yeah, in fact, if we're all, only able to find one, she's going to be really, 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 really busy. <laughs> Even if we have find two, they're going to be really, 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 really busy. Yeah. And Eric, I think you mentioned you thought maybe kids would be maybe disserviced or lose a service because we cut away into some kind of a position like family involvement corridor. And I think that to those kids in title schools, the school psychologist is going to be a huge benefit to any service that could get changed because that bringing in that perspective and that knowledge to work with that group of kids, especially our trauma kids, you know, is going to be better. So I would think that that will better service our kids. Does that make sense? Right. Rather than, than the losing the service, no. I would think they're going to be better served through I, having a school cycle. I disagree, disagree with that. I disagree with that. But, it, but I understand your point. Yeah. There are... There may be other services that the that the psychologist can provide that maybe the family coordinator or whatever cannot. Um, so there are maybe some levels that to which that that may be true. But if we could have building, both, yeah, that would be yeah, both, that would be the ideal. But if you take away a fic, theoretically, that fic is specific to a building, right? So right. they are providing those resources for that specific yeah. building, whereas the school psychologist is going to be spread amongst all buildings. So it's, I mean, yes two totally completely separate yeah. services being right. provided. So I, I mean I I agree. Kind of it's it's a good thing. It's just you're taking you are still taking away services in a different context. Mm -hmm. Put the love's gonna pass and there's yeah. no that would be great. Okay, any other discussion on that? So just to make sure you understand the um, one for the salary schedule for the school psychologists that will be going to the board on Monday for them to look at and hopefully approve. Uh, the rest of these we're gonna gonna wait on. Um, the other document that I will send you soon. I did a you know we've got I don't know roughly 20 salary schedules give or take a couple, and what I did was I took the top position in every line, figured what the um, step was, and then put a percentage to that. Uh, so just as an example, the on the SLP schedule for the masters right now, the step is 2.341%. And then I did that for every, every column of every salary schedule. 
It's time to wake up. <laughs> Actually, that's the, it's time to go to the gym, but we're clearly not doing that today. <laughs> okay. Well, we will be done in a few minutes, so if you want to get nah. it, good. good, good. Okay, so what Sorry, I did, did for myself, and I will send to you, I got this done about two minutes before I came up here. On a single sheet, those are all the columns of, of each um, salary schedule. And then the yellow ones are those that were SLPs, OP, OPTP, BCBA, and PCs. The blue are administrative and the green are teaching. Uh, those that are in white are other classified type positions. This one right now is um, indexed by the proposed step, which would mean these salary schedules that I've proposed to you. If you'll see those, it groups the yellow, brings them back together. When they're scheduled by, when they're sorted by the current, let me get over here so all of you can hopefully see. When they're, when they're sorted by the current step size, you can see that the OTPT, those groups are a lot more toward the, the top. This brings them back down closer to the administrative and to the teacher. Um, that's the group of employees that have the similar education to our administrators, to our teachers, so, um, duties and such. So this is current, this is proposed. Um, the things that I think are most glaring about this, number one, I do think it would make sense to bring those groups back toward the middle, some, which you can see it does from here to there. The other thing that's painfully obvious is that the step size for our teachers um, is too small compared to the others. So we either need to continue to work at lowering these or raising those. Um, and I think in a, in a graphic form that becomes really, really obvious. Uh, the lowest percent on here is if a teacher has a master's plus 48 hours, their step size equates to 1.149%, which is okay, except when you look at some of the others that are 2.341, something like that. So a teacher with a master's plus 48 that's here for 10 years is going to get an 11% raise, and a SLP with a master's is going to get a 23% raise. Same education, it just doesn't make sense. And that's why I feel like we need to normalize to compress those, those schedules and bring that closer back. Uh, hopefully, after we do that, then the next step is to look at the teachers and say, how do we move this up? How do we get the bigger steps there? So that's kind of the... the grand scheme in my mind of, of how we, we go about that. I'll send you this document. Um, it'll have the, the colors on there, and I'm not sure which way I'll send it to you, but you'll be able to sort it however you want by whichever column. And Has the board those. already approved at a previous meeting all of the salary schedules, teacher, administrator, and all the others for next year without a levy? No. The board has not yet approved any salary schedules. Okay. Um, when my, will that vote be happening? Or when my will intention, uh, what makes sense to me as a timeline, is in March to send all of them to them basically with no change other than the date. From 1819 to 1920 to say if the levy does not pass, here's, you know, I don't think anybody's anticipating any increase to salary schedules if we have no money, right. no new money. So we would have them uh, approve those in March. Also in March, we hope to have the teacher reappointment lists, and then every teacher will receive, every teacher who's on the reappointment list would get a contact through Talent Ed that would say your salary will be no less than, and it would have their current step and salary. So that way they've got a contract in hand, they know, hey, I've got a job. Uh, and then hopefully the levy passes, and then we would send out a revised contract with the new number. Okay. But you and said that would, with, be in, that would be in April. Right. You said with no proposed changes, but the changes for the BCBAs, OTs, well, BTs, yeah. that would right. still be in there, right? right? Okay. Yes. For those three. Okay. Uh, those three salary schedules, yes. Because we want to make sure that that's done for next year, correct? Well, that, that would be my intent. Are you guys on board with that? 
Now, would you send those people an explanation? So if I'm sitting over here thinking I'm going to get a $1,200 step, and I'm really, I'm moving yes. up the steps, so I'm not losing money, but you would send an explanation to them because, yep. with like a big asterisk by it, because shockingly they might not read the explanation yeah. they know they're getting that. You think that won't be read by uh, everybody? And having lived through that last year, there is that moment of panic. When yeah. You see, you know, mm -hmm. so, yeah. Just, I think I remember sending something out like that last year, Jerry, did I not? You did, it, but it, the Sarah schedule had already been published, and then okay. so there was that yeah. time lapse. Yes, yeah. yeah. Certain. It, Causes yeah. panic. That's very. Yeah. That's a very good point. That's something we need to do in advance. Is send it out and say this is what's being proposed. Right. Okay. Other questions about salary schedules. <coughs> Not currently, but I will probably have some questions and such that will be needed to that we'll address in at the next meeting. Okay. So make sure that salary schedules and stuff is on our next agenda. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would assume, uh, I would uh, anticipate next month's looking probably exactly the same as this one. Okay. We will put individual employee group calendars back on there. Insurance hopefully will have a live update. Um, forward planning, I don't know that anything is really going to change until we know if we have money or not. So that'll be just a, hey, here's where we are. Salary schedule discussions will continue. Uh, if any of you have specific questions, um, if you would send those to me in advance, that would be helpful for me to make sure I have the right information to, to share with people. Um, it seems like our next meeting is early in the month. I think it's because of the conference. Yeah. Is it the parent-teacher and spring? The 7th? March 7th? Yep, it is the cool. 7th. So that's that's only a couple weeks. So March 7th here. Um, unless anyone else has any items, we're done. Yes? I would like to, uh, either for next month, for our March 7th meeting, I would like to consider some amendments to the wording on our calendar, school calendar, so that it's a little more clear about the way that like the snow day situation can potentially be because it's it's a little misleading when it's written, when it says there's six there built-in snow days. Yeah. There are not six built-in snow days. And it currently says that and it said it on the, like, this year and we've approved it or the board's approved it for next year to say it that way. When in reality, there's five built-in snow days. The sixth is a makeup, but we've just scheduled the makeup day. And I also think it might be worth us looking at going ahead and listing on there, this is the seventh makeup day. This is the eighth makeup day. Give us a little bit of a cushion because Good Lord, this year has tested us completely. Um, so I think that might be something that's worth looking into because it's been confusing and I've answered a lot of questions about that. Okay. I have as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, that's not a problem. Um, my understanding is there is no 8th or 10th or 12th snow makeup day. Right. Correct. There are 7th and 9th yeah. and 11th. Right. This but year. still, you would list like this is the, these are the days that we will use as makeup. We don't have to number them. But you could say makeup, snow day makeup day, snow day makeup day, if applicable, if applicable, or whatever. So that we have, mm -hmm. like, we know that these days, because the other question that I've received, and I'm sure that you have to it, I know you have, um, are they going to make up days on spring break? Are things like things like that going to happen? It's not listed in our calendar. Does it mean the district couldn't do it? Probably not. They still probably could, but it, it wouldn't be a wise. I mean, it wouldn't be wise, in my opinion, for uh, staff morale to do something like that if it's not listed. So I think the more clear we can be on the calendar about when those makeup days would take place, the better. And looking at other districts' calendars, I've noticed that a lot of them do list this will be a potential makeup day, and some of them do, you know, list it anywhere within the calendar. Um, but I think that'd be something worth us looking at. Yeah, I don't. I don't see any issue with that. Dr. Edgar, were you going to say something? I couldn't tell. No, we, it's exactly what he's talking about in my previous district. That's how we did it. So we would put, you know, we would list Martin Luther King Day 121 as the first makeup day, you know, the Friday or the Monday after Easter break, and just and list six of them down at the bottom. Just, right. just like you're saying. Right. And I don't see why that would. 
No, I, I don't see any problem. The issue is when you get to where we're at now, we don't have any more. I mean, we have spring break, really. The yeah. Yeah. There's no cushion. It's, so it's, it's those literally days just the gone. end of the year. Yeah. yeah. And it may take a board vote to say we want to add them at the end of the year so that there right. isn't a thing in the middle of the year where we take spring break days or Martin Luther King or, you know, in right. our, my previous district, that's what we did. The board took the vote to say the makeup days will be added on at the end of the year. Make it day number one, May 21st. Make it day number two, mm -hmm. May 22nd. Because then you just push back summer school. Yeah. Uh -huh. And there is an item going to the board on Monday where the administrative recommendation is to push the last day of school from May 17th to May 21st. Yeah. Teacher work day to May 22nd. Summer school work day to May 23rd. Well, that's what we've done in the past. Well. Most of what we did last assuming year, Assuming yeah. that we don't have well, any yeah. Assuming that we don't have any more. Right. Assumes there are no more. Look at that. I think when we have that discussion, it, I, I would also like us to, to list on there somewhere that says that the teacher work day will be moved to the day after the new last day of school or something like that. Because I've also been asked about that. If we had only six days, if we had only six snow days, that sixth snow day was made up on teacher work day. So based on the way the calendar looks, it just takes that day away and then we don't, we don't yeah, teacher work day so, so really immediately proceed right, summer school or right. So just some wording like that I think is just going to help make it clear. Yeah. And, the, and the other thing that did come up, I'm sure you probably fielded questions too, was whether or not staff have to make up the PD day because that's one day out of their contract time right. that we, it, school was not in session mm -hmm. anyway, so it's not a kid contact day, but it was a contract day right that's been a, i think that was addressed that's in the addressed in the email that we got sent late this afternoon I'm just saying for future right. reference yeah. we've got yeah, that's, that's right but i think and i think if, if i misunderstood this or not is this this is going to be something that i think he said that he's looking again. at looking at making it a like an actual policy or something for next year so that well it's, it's, it's going to go to the policy committee oh, okay. my, my guess is it would still end up as an ap okay because otherwise you'd have to go in and change dates oh, every right. year in a gotcha. policy. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it, it will be in that form, but yeah, it makes sense. We want to get the board to say this is exactly how we want to do it. Um, okay. Either direction you go, whether you, whether the recommendation is to use some spring break days or add all days at the end of the year, you're going to, somebody's going to be upset. Right. I would just... Um, well, I think the only thing that you can do now where, you know, with the where time are. is... I think the end of the year is the only thing to look at. Because it sounds like that was consistent with what they've done in the past. Mm -hmm. Those aren't the strongest well, instructional so things, I'll just say. Right. You know? Oh, I know. Adding them to the end of the year is not the most bang for our buck there for instruction. That's true. That's not. After testing is all over, I think either way you're going to take it. Either way you're going to take it. And that's why I think listing for the future, listing certain days as designated makeup days yeah. is going to help because then people, like right now, if people have already scheduled vacations or cruises or whatever because of the break on spring break or whatever, they 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 have they, they can't get yeah. out of that. I've heard because, both ends. Yeah. 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 So, right, and if so people look at a calendar and they're interested right. in the summer, they can see that there's makeup days at the yes. end. They're like, well, maybe I'll wait and make sure. Push it back. Yeah, well, we yeah I won't we start my vacations because those could cost me. Yeah. Yeah. Even though that's the same thing that happens every right. year, people don't necessarily think it. Right. So having it there visual. would cause less My of My vacation would be this from 14 to 12. Yeah. I want to take an impromptu poll of my two board members, yeah. knowing that you're only two-sevenths of the board. Um, in my mind, it would make sense to make these wording corrections for the 1920 calendar, even though it's already been approved, as long as the number of contract days and the start and end day, none of that would change. It would simply be some wording on the calendar. Would you guys be opposed oh, yeah. to entertaining I don't think that? there's any problem with that. I don't think there'd be any problem. Yeah. Uh, that way we thing. don't have to it's wait a year to be yes. more clear is always better. Yes. So. Yep. Yep. so I think we you know we can discuss that next time and we'll come up with whatever changes we want and then we do it for this year. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean for the coming this year. coming year. Okay. All right. Thank I you had very even much. had someone ask me about extending the day by like thirteen minutes. Oh, we we, we can't do that, that because we said our calendar was going to be 164 okay. contact That's, days. What I told them, but I wanted yeah. to make sure that that was. Yeah, that, that's but he's already thought of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the article in the newspaper may have missed you because you're not aware of the article in yes. the last yeah. minute. Yes. 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 Yes.
how you can go where students won't have to make that. Thank you very much. Hey, make them up at, you wouldn't even have to.